y'all. Hey, welcome to the Power Women podcast. This is a show where powerful women share their journeys, discuss powerful issues, and the men and women who help us rise. And we are your host with three very different backgrounds and very different perspectives. I'm Brandy Jo Newman. I'm Gayatri Agnew. And I'm your power mom, Claire Brown. Hey, y'all. Hey, we're back this week and Gayatri's here with me. I'm so excited to see you. I always love seeing you again. I missed you. I missed you more. So tell us who's joining us this week. I'm so excited to pick all this apart. Well, I have I have a very very special human who's agreed to come on our podcast, and um, y'all know me. I like to hear people speak their own truth and talk about their own power. So, Joe, I apologize, but I'm going to make you tell us who you are a little bit about what you do, and if you miss anything, I'll fill it in. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for having me. It is an honor. Uh, to be here with you guys, Tree and Claire. It's good to connect with you as well. Yeah. Um, yes, I will tell you, uh, Guy Tree's like my Italian bestie, and we'll talk about that. Um, but I go by Joe. Giovanna is how you say my name. And if you can say Giovanna, great. Nothing in between. It's Giovanna or Joe, one of the two. So I reside here in the Pacific Northwest. And I work at a company, starts with an A, and I get to work on some cool technology for robotics automation systems to fulfill the products that you and I get to our doorsteps, uh, whether that's groceries or our booty care products, you know, make us look good and fly. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've enjoyed working here a little over four years, and I get to lead a team through this space, uh, whether it's hardware, software. Uh, lots of engineers, um, program managers. And before here, I had a chance to work at the Big B at Boeing for about 18 years. And I had fun there too. Um, They will always have a special place in my heart. Um, That's where I grew up. Uh, And I say that in all aspects of not only from uh, leading me from high school through college, um, and then of course my career after uh, college. So I'm forever grateful with them um, in helping me start my engineering discovery and also my leadership um, curriculum, um, best practices, um, and shaping me into the the leader that I am today. All right, what'd she leave out, Gayatri? What do we need to discuss? Because. The little bit that I know about you, Joe, is that you're literally a rocket scientist. Yeah. <laughs> I you think know. we would say robot robotics. Like you do, you do, um, you do, ev- you you do everything in technology. Like the cutting edge of technology is where your work sits. Yeah, that's right. Things that that's most right. people we, don't even know exist. You are integrating. That's right. and- that's between us integrating um, my team and along with um, I get to work with some really cool scientists, uh, research developers, and all of the things that we're talking the latest and greatest of that Gen AI. Yep, that's our you. teams dive into that space. Yeah. Um, whether it's um, thinking about, hmm, would you like a robot to bring groceries to your door? Yeah, maybe one day. I would uh, like a robot to do a lot of things in my house yeah. so I don't have to do that. I mean, I'm going to be yeah. honest. Like, I yeah. mean, ultimate leverage. The my, ultimate. My Roomba is not cutting it. I need more from yeah. the robot, from the robot universe. Um, but, but Joe, in your intro, I want to know more. I want to know yeah. more about you. You you gave us your business card and I appreciate that. I love a business <laughs> card. But I know more about you and I want our listeners to know more about you. Give us a little bit more about you. And aside from engineering and technology, you you studied another topic as well. I I did. There's two other topics. And thank you, guys. You see, that's why she's my my bestie. Mm -hmm. This is where um, I'm continuing to be a work in progress on sharing the whole me. And Uh one of the pieces for me, like my... My background, um, I grew up in music, um, started singing when I was a young girl, um, and that runs in my family. And so my other degree, so yes, have the engineering side, Bachelor of Science in double E, a Master's of Science in Electrical Engineering as well. Uh, I have a BA in music. Um, I'm a jazz vocalist, and I mainly sing at my church right now. 
But I had a band that I loved having jam sessions and getting gigs. And it's the other side of my brain that allows me to just find that creativity side that I love being able to share with others, um, to be a blessing and to be light here on earth, um, because there are some dark places here. And so how can I be a blessing is where I, um, I wake up, um, every day in that space, at least try to on the days that I know it's harder. And my other degree, I have a business degree. Um, my focus was negotiations and contracts and management. So that for me, I felt like it was a good, good mix of, of all the above. Um, I'm also a leadership coach. Uh, hats off to Seattle coach, um, Patty Bergen. She was my leader at the time and has been a good friend. And she's brought so many other leaders out of their shell uh, to mm-hmm. understand you need more tools in your kit as a leader. How do you bring people through their own journeys not to tell them what to do, but to come alongside them to understand where's their perspective or veranda that they're mm-hmm. seeing some of the challenges or mm, opportunities uh, that they're running mm-hmm. into as well, right? So that's, um, that's I'd say, 75% of me. The other 25% of me, uh, I am a family girl. I love my family. And my mom and dad actually just moved about here from the Midwest. Uh, mm-hmm. I grew up in St. Louis. If you hear a twang, that's why. <laughs> and love it. I am the baby of four. I have two other sisters, my brother. Um, we all live in different areas. Got lots of nieces and nephews. My husband, um, he keeps me sane. Um, I keep him on straight and narrow as well because that's just what I do. <laughs> and I have two bonus children. Um, and they're, they're grown. They're 22 and 30. So I, I enjoy my family and I want to make sure they have the best of what they can have and be a blessing to other people while here on this earth. How did I do dietary? You did excellent. You did excellent. I I love it. And, and I want to follow up on exactly that question about introducing yourself or your whole self. Mm. And Joe, I want you to just share a little bit with us from your veranda as a leader. Why do you think it's so, we're we're so quick, right? To give the the business card version of ourselves. And I don't know if it's gendered or if it's just generally, we're much slower to bring the other pieces, right? When you, when you told me, and we will get in this episode to how it is that Joe and I know one another, but when you told me that you had been a jazz vocalist, I was like, hold the phone. Like, wait a second. (laughs) Then when you sent me YouTube clippings of you just cash singing the national anthem at a professional sporting event, I was like, oh, oh girl. Okay. Yes. Yes, Claire. Right. So it's, (laughs) it's this whole part of you, but but oh, like, this just isn't don't... in the garage. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no She's not like, singing in her no, garage. No, no, like you're really good at it. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like people listen to you. She's fantastic. It's not like I it. just play and I like jazz and I sing along in the car. No, like, like I mean, I'm sure she does that do too. It. I'm sure she does yeah. that too. But, yeah. but like, no, this is our, you know, you you could have pursued music, right? Professionally, mm-hmm. you're good enough. But you have this incredible, illustrious career. And as even you introduce yourself here, I just want us to unpack because I did it. Boy, Claire broke me down mm-hmm. in season one of this podcast when I was like, Walmart and I do this. And I do this professionally. And she's like, but who are you? And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What are oh, your I am? Face. What are your five I am statements? And that's truly who you are. Mm. But why is it so hard? You know, why is it so hard? Not for you, You for anybody, for all of us. Well, you know, I think there's a little bit of conditioning that happens. Oh, yeah. Because if you ask any of us, right, ask five-year-old self of us, like, who are you? Like, oh, my name's Giovanna Taylor at the time. Taylor, and here's my Easter speech or whatever it might be, right? And Mm. the children just, they they don't have any limitations. They just Mm -mm. say who they are and because they have no fears, they have no um, preconceived notions of how people are going to receive them. Mm -hmm. At least for me, what I've noticed over my career and over others that I've coached along the way, 
there's there's this big space of who I am, and then something happens in different realms, and it sort of cuts the I call them their wings. They clip the wings a little more, clip the ling- wings a little more. Of okay, this is who I am. I fit in this box mm-hmm. or this this sphere, this this space, mm-hmm. and this is who I need to be for when I show up to business. This is where I need to show up where I'm in community. This is where I am at home because sometimes at home you don't share who you are. You could be a baddie like at work. Does your family know that? Right. And it could be vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. You have all of these things that you're doing in the community and with your family, but your leaders or managers, whichever ones they are, we can talk about that on another podcast, different between a manager and a leader. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll talk about that on this Mm -hmm. podcast. We're going to cover that right here. (laughs) But the thing is, there's, there's, uh, of I'll say a time in people's lives where these walls start to come up um, that sort of mm. box them in. And I would say I've seen more now that people are ripping those boxes down, walls down to say, no, this is the whole me. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Because I have to, in order for me to breathe, in order for me mm-hmm. to not have the pain on my shoulder, because mm-hmm. I'm carrying all this weight and all this here and all this in the crown, I can't. I, I I have to allow it to be. Doesn't mean I'll be disrespectful about it. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. As a leader, I understand mm-hmm. like what which muscles do I flex and when, but right. you still need to know who I am. Right. So, so yeah, I love how you phrased every bit of that, Joe. And so, would you say that? transparency is becoming a strength rather than a weakness. And that's the new shift. Yes. I I do believe transparency is becoming the new or the, the renewed Mm -hmm. need in our leadership Mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And I will say, um, you know, we've had some generations challenge us. Yeah. Um, I won't say which one I fall in. I'm like on a borderline. (laughs) Um, to challenge us as leaders to say like, hey, well, why do I have to fit in this box? No, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. You want to hire me for this position? Well, here's everything else that, what are you doing for the community? What are you doing for yeah. holistic, you know, mind, body, soul, spirit, et cetera, for employees to be here? So I think that is where where we got called on the carpet. And mm-hmm. now there's no packing it back in the box. Mm-hmm. no. It's like mm-hmm. Pandora's box. You can't put it all back in. That's right. That's yeah. right. Love 100%. That. Yeah. Joe, when you mention uh, the manager leader question, but also mm-hmm. you shared, right, you you are a very well-educated woman on in multiple disciplines and you went straight into Boeing at a college, but then you went back and you got certified as a leadership coach. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious how your coaching training informs mm-hmm. your management style and your approach to leadership. And yeah. in answering that, I want to get you to unpack the difference between a manager and a leader because it is uh. it is so important. And as you grow mm-hmm. in your career, I think you realize just how important that difference really is. Yeah. No, that's a, it's a, oh man, I'm looking at the time. Okay. Wait, all right. <laughs> I will be concise as much as possible. Uh, I would say the leader, the reason I went into um, even being curious about what a leadership coach was um, or a coach, you know, some people put leadership in front of it. Some people just say coach, but coaching, I wanted to understand the difference between coaching versus mentoring Mm -hmm. because I heard the terms being interchangeable and I was like, "Mm, I'm not sure if that's right. So I, went to a friend of mine who was a coach for the company at uh, at Boeing at the time. And she was phenomenal. Um, And she was very into somatic coaching, into um, making sure leaders had what they needed um, for being curious and unpacking. She didn't tell them what to do. She didn't lay out a plan for them. Mm-hmm. And that's for me. And she didn't share like her own personal examples when they were going through their their sessions, right? Um, whether it was group or individual. And so she introduced me to um, 
Seattle coach. Uh, and so that's where I took a couple classes and I was hooked. I was like hook lines. I was like, this is what I need for me to understand managing a task, managing projects. We all need it. We, we need to understand like what is due, where are our deadlines? What is it uh, linked back to our year and goals for the business? How does it link to the community? So all of those things are there. The difference as a leader, I believe they have coaching tools in their pack, their, their hip pocket or kit, as I say. Mm-hmm. They have these tools. And the reason they have these tools, because they want to understand their people holistically. Mm-hmm. When I say holistically, I mean physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Mm-hmm. You can't have the person without understanding like where it's not saying that you're projecting your own. Again, that's not a coach. You don't project your own mm-hmm. on your employee or the individual. It's understanding how do you connect to make sure hmm, something something's not right. Why is your eye twitching like on a regular basis in this meeting? What's what's going on? Right. You're reading their body. You're you're understanding. OK, they're not connecting with the message. What what's happening? Mm-hmm. That's the start as a coach or an leader to say there's something different. Good and not good. Right. And that's why I wanted to go down the path of coaching uh, so that I could have more tools to connect with my my employees, my team, that they can be the best of their full potential. That's the other piece that I think is a difference between a manager and a leader. Leaders really look at what's that potential. And sometimes it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, that's so qualitative. We can make it quantitative. We know where their capabilities are. We know how to measure those things. Now, where else are they growing? Where else are they curious? Well, if you don't have those coaching skills, you won't know how to ask that. It'll become very prescriptive and tactical of like, oh, well, you're good at managing tasks. You should be a manager of people. We've seen that happen. Mm -mm. That's not always good to make that big jump. And they may not really want that. So how do you create that space for them to think through for themselves? Hmm, What am I curious about? Where else do I feel I'm being called plus my skills? Where, where is there alignment? Mm -hmm. So that's, that for me is where I land for that management versus leadership space and where coaching can be important as, as a toolkit for a leader. So can I simplify that? And sure just to make sure I understand you real quick. So the biggest thing I heard there was curiosity, which I love so much because mm-hmm. I, I say something all the time that we need to get out of curi- get out of judgment and get into curiosity. Yes. With everything, everything. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's your grocery list, it doesn't matter. And so then the key to that is, And the difference in leadership and management is curiosity with questions. And then management is directives. That's right. Okay. I I think that's uh, perfect simplicity. Yes. Okay. So, Joe, um, when you started to get curious about your own, like, next phase, maybe we'll call it that. Something, mm-hmm. some some form of curiosity and inquiry in you led you, just like it led me, to make the, I'm not going to call it crazy. I'm going to call it brilliant, actually. Brilliant <laughs> choice to agree to go to Northern Italy, to the Cinque Terre, with a leadership coach from Seattle and eight other badass women, badass executive women, um, to grow, to challenge ourselves and to grow. I want you to share with folks, and that's how we met, by the way, uh, that Joe and I were both on this this journey, this, exp- I don't know what to call this experience in Italy. Yes. And I think for both of us, we talked about like there was so much trust that it took to get on the plane, to fly to the other side of the world and to say, I am trusting that something about my current leadership journey my life mm-hmm. is calling me to push 
myself into spaces that maybe I didn't know I needed the push. But what what led you to know that that journey and that experience was was what you needed at that time? Mm. You know, and it was it was funny because that it was another trip. Uh, I think it was last year. Uh, Mitch from Human Inc. She's wonderful. She was working on. She's like, Joe, you should you should come to Switzerland. And they, were, I was like, I don't know about this whole hiking, Mitch. I don't in the <laughs> snow. What or what? I, let me think about that because I do enjoy nature but I like lamping, right? It's, there's a balance. (laughs) And so I knew I was like, okay, timing's not right. And it just didn't align with last year. This year, I, I got the email from her and I was like, "Mm." and it just kept sitting in my spirit, just kept sitting in my spirit of like, you need to go, you need to press, you need to press. And things happen um, on a personal front. Um, And I'll share, you know, high level, my husband and I, we were going through our fourth IVF session in vitro fertilization. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, you know what, whether it's successful, I need to be on this trip and to figure out what strength, what, what do I need for my next strength uh, build as a leader? And if it goes the other way, I need to be surrounded by women that can just pour into me right now, not only from a leadership aspect, but holistically. Um, And there were some other coaches there that were working through somatic um, and just reflection of self of where am I currently? What shaped me? Mm -hmm. I knew I needed it. Mm -hmm. And even my manager, sorry, wrong term, my leader, (laughs) he was like, go, you need to go. And I was like, okay, even for me, I, it, it did, we, we weren't successful. And I was literally going through the healing space while mm-hmm. I'm on this trip. And I promise you to come out on the other side. And it was only, what was it? Seven days, but it felt like we were there for a month. Mm-hmm. Just how intense some of these sessions were of ripping off the mandate and peeling back the layers of, yeah. What shapes some of your yeah. um, your being, not only yeah. from a leadership aspect, but just you. Yeah. And I hadn't had somebody ask me those questions of, huh, I don't, I didn't realize, you know, so much of my environment or those shapes of environment um, were impacting in a good and in different way for mm-hmm. me. So I think that was the reason I said yes. I knew that I needed something to just really push me into that next space. Um, And the season just, I I feel like for me, God was telling me, hey, I need you to like, trust me on this one. And I did. That's such an impactful story and journey to tell, Joe. I mean, it's massive and you may not recognize that. And I can't thank you and so grateful for you sharing that. I mean, Mm -hmm. I... I, I jokingly say that, you know, when one, when you go to a baby shower and one woman tells their birth story, they all want to tell their birth story. It's just like, <laughs> hang on tight. Like, here we go. You know, and, and so, but there's so many women that struggle with infertility. Mm-hmm. And it is the unspoken journey. It mm-hmm. is the silent journey that we struggle with. And I had that. I went through that. And, and so I, I understand the depth of that lonely and that pain. Um, and then to carry the, the weight, sometimes the heaviness of the corporate world and the management, mm. the leadership as well of team and of family and then of care of self. And how do you, you know, the, the, the question that I receive is how do you do it all and how do you not burn out and how do you not do this and how do you not do that? Your answer is the is the answer to the question of, well, I recognize it himself. I recognize mm-hmm. that I do carry it all and I do do it all. And I recognize that I do need strong women around me and I do need to create this space. And it is a matter of we only succeed through others and who we surround ourselves with. Mm-hmm. And so 
golly, thank you so much for sharing the, that intimacy of that because it is our programming. And until we peel back that programming, our business only grows to the extent that we do. So true. It's so true. And it's, um, you know, I do just want to say, cause I know Joe and I share a similar lived experience of if you'd asked like 15 year old self versions of us, would you be an executive leader in corporate America? And would you be flying to Italy for a women's retreat? Right. I would have like just right. laughed. I would have been on the floor a lot. Like, but I actually don't even know that I would have understood most of the words I just said. So I do right. just want to call out, right. Whether you're going to Italy or whether you're taking a half a day, and going mm -hmm. to the lake near your home and you're just going to mm -hmm. sit with you or sit with a girlfriend um, or frankly, shameless right. promo, whether you're coming to the Power Women Retreat in Arkansas in early October, which we'll get a link posted around <laughs> this podcast for what that time is, irrespective of how it happens, is your choice to invest in you and nobody can make that choice but you. Yeah. And when people look at you and they say, like you talk about your leader, Joe, saying, I want you to make the space and the time for that. That is such a kindness. It's such a gift because what they're saying is, I see the greatness of your potential and mm -hmm. I know that mm -hmm. you need to reset. I know that you need to be able to draw strength from something or someone or a group, right? Or a group in a way that you're currently not. And it, I just, I run into so many incredible women who cannot step a foot off the hamster wheel long enough to give yeah. themselves that gift of pouring yeah. into them, whatever it looks like, right? Whatever it looks like. Joe and I were so blessed to have it look like seven days in the Cinque Terre in Italy, right. which is seared into my soul now as this, this gift of being in a place I never thought I would ever see with women I never thought I would ever meet. But that doesn't have to take place in a place like that. That is that Right. That is that moment right. of choice to invest. So I want I want both of you right, to speak right. to this. Actually, you too, Claire, because like we just you watch so many women and men, but mm -hmm. I'm women especially who just can't get to that place where they say I am absolutely worth it. I am absolutely worth it. Mm. Yeah. Well, I I want to go back to the very beginning of this and how we asked Joe to introduce herself. And it's going back to I am. And what if we he said, OK, well, who are you? And if what if we said, well, I am worthy of things you can't imagine. What if we saw ourselves in that light? And I said to Gayatri last night at dinner, I said, you know, we'll never see our own potential because we don't see ourselves through the eyes of God. And mm. what if we chose to start doing our very best to do that? And then that's how we introduced ourselves. I am a child of God. I am a powerful woman. And I am worthy of things you can't conceptualize. Who are you? There she is. There she is. Bring it. Claire yeah. brings it. She brings it. <laughs> you know, so it, how are you showing up in the room? How are you introducing yourself? And it's truly how you define you. Mm. I don't necessarily have to give you my business card, my mommy card, my everything else. I'll tell you who I am as a being and my worth. And then you show up and meet me where I am. But it's hard, Claire. You did a lot of work to get to that. You did oh, a lot of work you. on you to let get me, to that. Let me tell you, the trenches are deep and muddy. And I am a dirty girl. I am a dirty, dirty girl because of it. So don't just think she woke up one day saying, let me tell you how lucky the world is to receive my it greatness. Took a long which time are, to get this which pretty. Are. Uh -huh. it took a long time to get this pretty, sister. I'm a dirty girl. It's, but it shines. But it shines. Uh, it shines from the inside out. You are an infectious human to be around, and Joe, so are you. Yeah. And yes. it's because you. It's because you've taken that time from your inside out to actually like pull that core mm -hmm. of you. And, and mm -hmm. gift that core of you to the world around you for those lucky enough to be close to you. That's right. Incredible. Because we see in others. Yeah. We see in others what we see in ourselves, the good and the bad. And so when I'm able to meet someone, just as I'm meeting Joe here for the first time, I'm able to connect and I see her deeply. And I'm able to say, oh, I see this woman and she's a 
she's a real rocket scientist. She's a woman <laughs> in STEM that has soared when women don't. And she has, she has broken through barriers that haven't been broken. And I can see the journey and the depth of the pain that she is on right now because, man, I've been there. And I know the hand that needs to be held. And I, and I, mm. I never invested in myself and cared for myself the way that she's doing right now in the trench that she's in. And so I know how important it is because, man, if someone would have given me that permission, mm-hmm. oh, what a gift it would have been. Yeah. I'm coming in October. You can send yes, me the link. Yes, yes she we can, is. We can room yes, together. We is. can room like, together. I, this is like, Claire, you, you said, oh my goodness. I don't, the, the piece of, no, this, this didn't happen overnight Mm-mm. for any of us. That's and right. I think the fact that we we understood, okay, there's more to life than just operating again back in that box or that that small space. And your wing, like for me, my wings wouldn't allow me. Like I had mm. body pains, literally aches in my back, my head, my stomach, where it was just like I felt like God was like, no, come, come on. Like I need you to come out because I need you to do work in the community, at home, in your job. And yeah, guess what? You don't you don't need to say who I am, but people see that light through you of just what does it mean to be loved mm-hmm. on earth, That's it. right? That's it. As a leader, you can still love your people mm-hmm. and to make sure they have the basics to do their job, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And go beyond the basics to make sure that what else do you need to thrive? Yeah. How can I fill Not, in your gap? Yes. And that's mm-hmm. the part where I, I believe the the command of, I'll say women specifically, we, we do have to take that command back of, oh. we have a lot to bring to the table, mm-hmm. just as any other uh, person, uh, mm-hmm. however they identify, that they bring to the table. Yeah. We sometimes check the box, say like, ooh, I think I got 85%. Maybe I can get out 10 more percent before I, I sign up for this position or take on this role. Or No, others sign up at 20%, yep. less qualified, and mm-hmm. they show up somehow and sell themselves for that role. Yeah. And in their mind, they're thriving. They're doing their thing. And along comes Joe and says, hold my beer. Here we go. <laughs> Hold my, I think here's, it's hold my Italian my, wine. Hold my, hold my right. Italian here's my wine. wine. <laughs> hold my Prosecco. True story. Just a second. Yes. You, you see yes. us. You see us. You weren't even on the trip. I know. I know. I know. Don't even need I, the orange juice. Oh. Take it straight. Thank you. I know we, we don't have tons of time. So Joe, I do have, I have a yeah. question around your, your career currently and your choice to come into the role that you're in now. And I say that, I say that intentionally, your choice to come yeah. into the role that you're in now um, and to be working for someone who you referred to as a leader, right? Not just mm. as your manager, yeah. because I think yeah. we all reach points in our career where certainly what we're doing matters and where we're doing it matters, but much more than that is who are we with every day and who, who yeah. is supporting us? And then also who are we supporting? So I'm, I'm yeah. just curious for you as you went into this role or as you think about other roles and other opportunities, what are the ingredients? What are the, the pieces you look for in an environment yes. that you go into that you know will help you thrive? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question for us to unpack. And I would say for me, it was, okay, yes, I'm curious about the role. Like, where could it help me fill in some gaps or, you know, percentages that I feel I'm still not 100% at? Okay, I'll be honest with myself. I know I'm a baddie when it comes to technology. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, When it comes to leading programs, yes, I've done them at different scales. Okay, this is a different customer set. And so for me to step into... Well, not only for traditional fulfillment, but for groceries. What is, what, is, what is, I know from a consumer aspect, what I like and what I'm curious about. Well, how can technology aid in that aspect to make sure, you know, not only the customers are working backwards to our employees, the people we work with, like they're thriving um, in this space too. So that's what hooked me on the curiosity of the role. I think the 
other piece that really sold me, um, as there's a piece of another leader had the responsibility for this role and I was working for them and this wasn't their jam. You know, they, they understood like what needed to be done and they're like, "Mm, there's more that could be here. And I just raised my hand. I said, Hey, how about I take it on to say, where does the roadmap go? How can we double down in the next three to five years? Where are we going to see the technology grow in this space? Who are all of my stakes? He's like, okay, so you're passionate about this. So yeah, let's get you connect to the right people. Mm -hmm. So he connected me with my current leader. And this man didn't know who I was. And he, I would say, asked me a question. He said, yeah, you coming over makes sense for the business, but I need you to interview my leaders so that they can say from their own lens, if I'm the leader for you, I was so, I was like, wait a minute. Nobody's ever said this to me. You want <laughs> me to awesome. interview to make sure you're my, oh, you are my person. I was right. like, hold it, hold, it, oh, hold it back, hold it together. Yeah. And so- yeah. That's integrity. I said, okay. That's right. integrity. I said, okay. Yeah. He believes if his people will will share yeah. about him, because I gave him a mm-hmm. list of questions. I said, well, all mm-hmm. right, if this is where I'm supposed to be, this is what I need. And I made them holistic questions. Yep. What are you doing to make sure that your leaders have what they need only, not only inside of work, but that they can thrive mm-hmm. like in their every day? Right. You know, do you work them, you know? 12 hours a day, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. all of those things. And how are you investing in them? Yeah. And he answered all those questions plus some. So I said, okay, this is the season where I need to be. This is mm-hmm. who my leader is in this season. And he helped me understand of, yes, I'm in this technology space for now, but now I'm one of the, now who's like, I'm chasing the leader. Yes. The tech, the business, all that stuff will come, but I'm chasing the leader because I need to make sure I'm continuing to grow. And then that means I'm bringing others on the journey too. That's right. You know, for where I am in my season and and career, I'm not early anymore. Mid. mm, Yeah, sure. Mm hmm. I'm looking so what, at it. But that's such a huge, <laughs> but that's such a huge pearl of wisdom, Joe. It's all about the who. Yes. It's all yeah. always about the who. And when yeah. you have the right who that you align with and values, everything else is butter. The rest of and, it comes together, doesn't it? it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all about the who. I can't tell you no. how grateful I am for your time for being here, for sharing so many w- Ask nuggets. Ask one last question, Claire, just one. Fine, one. one. But this Joe, is it. What can the world expect? What can the world expect from you in the next year? What's something you're going to oh. gift to us in the next year? Well, she's going to oh. gift us with her presence in October. Yes, well, so that, I'm, but... I'm going to figure out, yes, that's that's yeah. a given. Um, I think in the she next big year. Plans, so I'm, I'm wanting to I, extract. I have some big plans. Before. It's a little bit of so, it. and she's holding me accountable, which I love it. You in the that? next year, what, what the world, yes, what the world can um, expect to see and hold in anticipation is how I'm showing up outside of my day job as a leadership coach. Um, I plan on taking on a, a different platform uh, for that space because I want to reach more technology female leaders so wherever they are in their journey that they can have a voice and start to shape reshape for some but shape up you know for others what their journey could look like not what's been painted for them but what it could look like um the other spot i would say is um there's going to be probably some ted talks that come through this space Mm-hmm. I would like to share more of how, you know, and it may not just be me on the stage. I may have to ring, ring. Hey, all right. Empower <laughs> women. It's time to I get s- on that other stage. <laughs> Six and say, Joe, we got a lot to talk to you about. I can't well, wait. That's where I'm like, oh, so I have this, this desire to have fireside chats to just not only women, along with allies, this mm-hmm. is the part, the big piece for me that I want to break down barriers for those yep. that are like, 
oh, it's a women issue. I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm-mm-mm. Let me make sure you understand. Like, we got it. Mm-hmm. We have our, we're, we're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We need those that are ready to come alongside us and say like, hey, yeah. we're here in your business. We're here in mm-hmm. your companies. You've hired us to do these jobs. Right. And we want to go beyond jobs. We want yeah. to actually lead. Mm-hmm. Right. Whether that's being a principal right. or the technologist or whatever it is to lead in that space. Right. How do we Which come right. alongside them and make sure that yeah. y- allies have the tools that they need to do this? Yeah. Right. It's all in, in a it's safe very simple. Way. Yeah. It's just a it conversation. It's very, just that's, a conversation. Where it's, that's where it starts. Yeah. That's where it's, that's, yeah. And they need the tools to do that for some reason. Mm-hmm. Not all leaders, managers are equal. Right. No. So they need it. They need it. That's right. We need some yeah. tools to help get where the bar can can come up. Yeah. Just a little bit more. No, so. but you're so right. Power women will not succeed yeah. to their highest level without the help and leverage of That's power right. men. That's right. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I will say is um you'll find me on Instagram. There will be a love and butter Instagram uh space where I can bring the space of music my love of food and just have leaders come in and have a conversation. So um, it's just an informal self. chat. The whole that's self. Right. You find the whole that's self awesome. of Joe at love and butter. Yeah. That's, right. that's I wonderful. Love that. I love that. Thank you for showing up with your whole self, Joe. Thank you. So <laughs> that we can meet you where you are today and help others grow and learn so much about so many things. I mean, we could go on and on and on. I, I, it's I, the start, I'm just right? It's so, the start of the conversation. The yes, so. it's, it's really the just start. the start. Because I do. I, I need to talk to you so much more. Um, and I'm so <laughs> Anytime. excited. I'm yeah. Let's talk in October. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. Yay. Um, thank you. Thank you so much the, yeah, for sharing your gift. Thank you. Thank you both. This has been a blessing. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, please rate and review on iTunes and check out our website, thepowerwomen.org.